And we're back here, everybody, in Inside the Ropes, and I am joined by the OG of the Bullet Club. He is the man. He's a man on Twitter who will tell you what he thinks anytime. It is Mr. Tamatonga. How are you, my man? Very good. Thank you for having me on here, man. Very good. How well, you listen, doing? I'm good. I'm good. We were just talking off air there about how the world is the world's going so well right now. Everything's great. We're no, it's, it's kind of <laughs> fucked, but we're here and we're trying. <laughs> Um, right. <laughs> but listen, I mean, it's, it's exciting stuff because obviously New Japan Strong is going to premiere tonight, August 7th on uh, New Japan World. And it's going to be the, the, the New Japan Cup tournament, but for the first time not in Japan. Um, this is pretty exciting for New Japan, right? Because we've been seeing a lot of stuff about doing stuff in the States. This is a pretty exciting time. Oh, yeah. Very exciting. Especially for me. I've, I've been working in Japan 10 years. And to, to see this uh, progress of coming over to the United States, this is great. We've been trying to make our way over uh, overseas for a very long time, just doing tours. But to, to actually run these these uh, these tournaments out here, this, this is new. This is exciting times. And it's, it's kind of good that you got to, to do this all and get it done before the pandemic hit so that you don't have to, to worry. It's all in the can. Like, we don't need to worry about, you know, <laughs> One round's been filmed, we got away, so people are going to get to see the whole thing. Right, right, yep. We, we've, you know, done, uh, went through the precaution, precautionary measures, you know, we've done everything, and, and uh, it's good. I'm glad it's over. Oh, it's <laughs> done. <I'm> done. <laughs> you're glad it's over. Well, listen, you're, you're, the, you're one of the OGs of the Bullet Club, and I thought it was interesting because whether people watch New Japan all the time or they're just checking it out, or they've never watched it, they know what the Bullet Club is, right? They just know the t-shirts everywhere. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, whether you look at AEW and you see the Bucks, or you look at WWE and you see AJ and Balor, like, loads of people have come from the Bullet Club, and the Bullet Club is maybe the only wrestling faction that is still going. You know, like DX and NWO, they all fizzled out, but no matter what, the Bullet Club's still going. What do you think it is about the Bullet Club that has just made it so successful and you know, led so many people who were in it to get so many other opportunities out of it? Um, I, I think what, what makes us different is that our ability, ability to, uh, to, to spot talent and fill voids and adapt with the times. And that's what's kept us moving forward. Um, so uh, whenever guys, you know, we, we go through a rotation with guys coming in and then leaving, uh, the new guys coming in, we, we, we hand select these guys, you know, we hand select them and, and, and two specifications that we need for bullet club. And you know, the other thing is that with, with AEW, you know, I know that when, when the Bucks got their hot topic deal and Tony can, you know, there's, you can't not look at the correlation between what the bullet club were doing, you know, WrestleMania, you'd see all the bullet club t-shirts and now there's AEW. It must be pretty satisfying for you guys to know that what you're doing in Japan is so impactful, you know, all across the world. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, just hearing that Tony Khan created AEW because of Bullet Club makes me feel really good. Uh, but it's um, to make it this this kind of level to change the wrestling game and and not be on the American mainstream is is a big deal to us. You know, to as to me, especially watching it grow now that Bullet Club's been doing it for seven years. It's it's good stuff, man. It's definitely uh, what a time, what a time for wrestling. And, um, you know, I've also got to ask you about the, the good brothers, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Everybody's talking about them and talking about are they going to come back to New Japan. I've got to ask you about it. What, what do you think? Are we, are we going to see you too sweet in them soon? Like, what's the situation? Uh, you're going to see me too sweet in them sooner or later. So, uh, but I'm excited. I'm excited. It's nice to see them come out of the, uh, the gated walls and play outside. So, uh, you know, <laughs> was it was it weird for you to watch? You know, two guys who you know you you know so well and are so phenomenally talented, and you know they were just they were in a situation where they weren't really able to show all the stuff they could do. Was that, I mean, is it kind of nice for you as a friend to be like, yeah, now now you can come back and and have fun again? Uh, it wasn't weird because I know they were making. And a lot of damn money so you know, to me it, it wasn't weird i it, um yeah they were making great money so to me that that was just that's all we wanted to do was wrestle and make a lot of money and and make an impact like that but now that they're out 
you know, I'm glad they're out now because they've always shown what they could do in, in New Japan. They've always done it. They've always shown that. And I re- and the game is to make that money. Of course, of <laughs> course. Um, I'm, did you get a chance to watch the, the worst pay-per-view ever, Talking Shop of Mania? <laughs> did, you, did you have any favorite parts of that absolute shit show? Uh, yeah, my favorite part was turning it off. Um, <laughs> yeah, <but> I, but <laughs> that was the absolute worst paper we've ever seen. But uh, yes, I watched the beginning and then uh, and then I shut it off. But <laughs> it was good to see you know go in there. <laughs> you didn't even make it to the main event. You were you were done. Yeah. Man, hell no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got I got love for the good brothers, man. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got enough patience. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I've got actually as well, you know, with, with evil and everything that's happening over there in the Bullet Club, Double Champ, you know, there was, there was kind of, it, some people were shocked that he's in the position that he's in now. What do you say to the kind of, the, the people who are criticizing or questioning him being in the spot that he's in? Shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's what I need to tell them. Yeah, fucking Bullet Club has always done what Bullet Club has done. And there's a reason why we've been, where we've been and what we're doing and how far we've gone and so shut the fuck up that's what i would tell them <laughs> is there is there a is there i mean obviously <laughs> i don't i don't know where i go from that um <laughs> just shut the fuck up um so i will um <laughs> we, obviously we're in this pandemic we don't know when we're going to get out of it we don't know what's going to happen but i mean is there what is it like for you because you know you're somebody who is so charismatic you want to wrestle you want to get out there and you must have plans that you can't do yet. How are you kind of coping with everything right now? Uh, I'm staying fit, you know, staying, uh, making sure that when, when doors and uh, everything opens back up, that I'm, I'm ready, that I, that shows my, um, my readiness. I, I don't want to be slacking off. I don't want to, I want to come back and look like I've been wanting to come back and not, you know, I don't want to be slacking. I don't want to get caught sleeping, man. That's that's the that's the whole thing here. Um, and I hope every wrestler is on that on that same mentality because we're you know we're itching to come back, and so we're doing all these damn workouts, these five hundred damn squats, these push ups and shit. I um we need to come back and start rock and roll. I I just feel like everybody's ready to explode here. And and it, we're gonna need a ring here to uh, showcase that. And then you know, obviously, New Japan's had the partnership with with Ring of Honor, and a lot of people talk about they want to see an AEW New Japan partnership. Some people talk about an Impact New Japan partnership. I mean, is there is there anywhere in the US that you want to go in particular when everything's back to normal and kind of mix it up? Do you want to see more partnerships kind of happen with other companies? Yeah, I I think it would be great. I think it would be great to uh, spread. Our, our brand awareness is to is to work with these other companies and uh, get our talents out there to to see our product. So, um, yeah, I would like that. I think it'll be better for all wrestling altogether. And um, with the Bullet Club, if you if you could pick from the entire wrestling landscape, dream Bullet Club member, you're going to bring them in. Who are you bringing in, and why? Dream Bullet Club member, huh? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I don't have a Dream Bullet Club member. I am the Dream Bullet Club member. Nobody else. I don't have no goddamn... I don't care for anybody on the outside. They got to come in and show up and do some shit. But I don't I don't have a Dream Bullet Club member. I'm not out here fantasizing to get anybody in. I think everybody has to prove their worth first and then be brought in and we work from there. And I think that's what makes us different. Great. And, um, you know, you, you talked in your podcast a little bit about this, and I'd never, I never knew this story. I, a lot of people probably don't know it, but um, you almost joined WWE at one stage, and it didn't quite happen. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, and obviously the decision not to do it, and obviously stick with what you're doing now with the Bullet Club? Yeah, uh, uh, it was at the time, 2016, when Gallows and uh, Anderson and and AJ left for uh, WWE, and um, I had a meeting with, with them, and I made a commitment, and I said yes, because at the time, 
I just felt like that was, it just felt natural. Um, I thought, I thought it was a progression in my, uh, in my wrestling career. Um, and then New Japan came back and, uh, counter offered and they made a, made me offer. I couldn't uh, refuse. And here I am. Making a lot of money and, and being happy. Um, <laughs> I love money. That's right. <laughs> uh, well, that's it. Tam, I want to thank you for the time for joining us. Um, obviously, everybody can check out New Japan World uh, to see you and Brody King in the first round of the tournament. I would wish you luck, but I feel you're not the sort of guy that needs luck. You're just going to go out and kick their ass. <laughs> man, damn, you're a smart damn man. Know that, Kenny? <laughs> Do you know, I've never heard that before, so this is the first time. <laughs> 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 uh, well, listen, uh, stay safe, man. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to you getting back out there soon and showing what you guys can do.